Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Initially, uh, I had been asked to make a presentation of expansion or redevelopment challenges in Bogota. Later, they asked me rather to speak more broadly to issues in Habitat 3. And Habitat 3, uh, of course, is to me personally is special because the Secretary General to Habitat 1 in Vancouver, he was my father. So I lived this uh, experience. So, uh, so I, am trying, I will try to make some general recommendations of when I, as a mayor and a city lover, what are the big obstacles that I have seen through life. When I go to India, and I see that India has 50 is 50% urban, in the transition between 50% urban to 80% urban, large cities in Latin America increased by more than 1,000% in population and the area more, more than 2,000 percent. So if the same thing is to happen in India, Indian 20, 30, 40, 50 Indian, large Indian cities will be at least 2,000 percent larger in 40 or 50 years. So everything is to be done. And what is, makes me pain is to see that Latin America, being the most recent urbanization example uh, experience in the world, they should look at Latin America, not in order to do what we did, but in order not to do what we did. And unfortunately, they are not doing it in Africa or in India or in other Asian countries. 90% of many 2,066 developing countries it is yet to be built. They could be better and different than they are, even than advanced cities, but unfortunately, we are not doing it. Developing country cities will not be able to have Notre Dame cathedrals or New York subway system, but they could have some amazing infrastructure. For example, hundreds of miles, hundreds of kilometers of greenways shaded by giant tropical trees, which New York or Paris could not have. We are not doing anything of that. This is actually in an advanced city, but we could have things like this, but much bigger, hundreds, thousands of miles crisscrossing developing country cities. The most important thing for a developing country, quality of life and economic competitiveness, at least over the next 300 years, is where and how its cities grow. However, national governments don't pay much attention to this. Nations should create the institutions and invest the money that will allow them to have cities to grow in the right locations so that millions of daily trips for hundreds of years into the future are shorter and done by transit. If, not, if the governments don't intervene, we will have problems. For a city to grow in the right place, so that, for example, imagine the cost. What is the cost for a city to grow 50 kilometers farther or 50 kilometers closer to the existing city? Millions of trips that are 50 kilometers shorter done by public transport. So how do we achieve that? For a city to grow in the right place, the first thing is to have a serious growth projections, as Lomo Angel says, not emotions, but serious. The second is to have a plan. And land is the main issue. Government must control land use. It's necessary for government, not for private interest or even municipalities, in order to solve housing needs so that people do not, are not forced to illegal squatters, for the city to grow in the right place for, in order to avoid illegal slums, in order to save space for roads, for parks, for greenways, and even for schools. I myself, at this moment, we need to make many schools and hospitals in Bogota, and we don't find the land for it. It's very difficult because all this illegal or semi-illegal development did not save land for this. So clearly, land, government must control what land in order to, for the city to grow in the right place and to make a good city. And this is not happening. This is the most important issue. I don't know of any developing country that it has a market economy where this is happening. Governments must guarantee an adequate supply of land or else the poor will be pushed to informality or to terrible faraway locations. And restricting urban expansion, as has happened in many cities, such as in my city over the last 10 years, has pushed the poor, increases the prices, and pushes the poor very far away. This is Bogota, Colombia. We should not be, because it's almost a $6,000 income per capita city. It's a shame. So. 
This is land around Bogotá. You see the city, only very close to it, very close. The city, you, we could have a perfectly planned city if there was the institutional powers, the political decision, if government really would have the power. It could have mass transit, it could have great parks, greenways, large parks, all of this. But this is not happening because there are private interests and local municipal interests which want to do it in a different way without any serious planning. If a democratic principle be beyond control of land, in order to really have effective control of land, ultimately there must be the possibility to use eminent domain. If a democratic principle is that public good prevails over private interests, property acquisition through eminent domain is not communism, but democracy. This is necessary both for expansion and for redevelopment. Not necessarily at first, but as a second, as a last instance, is necessary to have this possibility. How should, and now I will go into how should cities grow. From the beginning, again, it's necessary to reserve enough public spaces for roads, parks, schools. How to distribute road space if all citizens are really equal, Pedestrians, bicyclists, and bus riders have a right to the same amount of road space per person as somebody in a car. How to distribute such a road space? Look in London, there is more space for pedestrians than for motor vehicles and no private cars in these streets, for example. This is not a technical engineering decision. This is a political democratic decision. What makes a difference between advanced and backward cities in my opinion, in terms of infrastructure, is not highways or subways, but quality sidewalks. This is a picture of underdevelopment, of lack of respect for human dignity. That's a more decent sidewalk. This is what we should have. Protected bikeways in every street are not a cute architectural feature, but a right, unless we believe that only those with a motor vehicle have a right to safe mobility. Many things can be changed, can be solved after a city is built, but if we do not save space for parks from the beginning, it is very difficult to demolish 50 hectares, 100 hectares of city afterwards in order to create parks. So this is crucial to save land for parks, and we are not doing it. Urban highways are like poisonous rivers. People cannot get near them. There should be avenues or boulevards rather than highways. This is, Chancellor said, 10 car lanes, but one of the most attractive pedestrian spaces in the world. So, no highways, boulevards from the start. Good city will move by public transport, and the only affordable public transport system in developing country cities are bus-based systems, even if there are a few subway lines. So, I would say that a bus in traffic is as undemocratic as women not being able to vote. Clearly, if citizens are equal, a bus with 100 passengers should have a right to 100 times more road space than a car with one. It's basic democracy. And a system like this in Bogota is moving more passengers our direction than any subway line in Europe or in China, except Hong Kong, at a fraction of the cost. The obvious things, of course, there should be no parked cars or blind walls behind street fr in street fronts. This should be dealt with in Habitat 3. These things, this is horrible. That's happening in all developing country cities. High rises with blind walls against sidewalks. Parking requirements increase housing prices and push low-income citizens away from desirable locations. Government intervention, of course, is necessary if we're going to achieve some income mix in cities. And the not so obvious, to finish, clearly this is the cities we have today. Children grow in fear of getting killed as soon as they walk out of home. We can do different cities with different infrastructure. Greenfield growth permits making different, better cities. For example, every other street could be a pedestrian and bicycle only street. This is very easy to do in a city that is being built from scratch. This is the kind of infrastructure we did. A few of these in Bogota, about 100 kilometers of these pedestrian and bicycle highways. Things like this, easy to do in new cities. Of course, it could be much better. I know here there are urbanists and this is in a rush, but we could do roads from the start just for buses and bicycles. Not all of them, of course, but this is the kind of thing that could be done in developing country cities, which advanced cities cannot do. We are missing a fantastic opportunity. I hope that Habitat 3 can push for some of these different, better 
urban design.